Great Creator God, we gather in your presence in our homes. Loving risen Lord, we are drawn into your love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Inspire and enrich our worship as we are gathered. Church, we are, I do welcome you all for midweek service. Today is Wednesday, the 3rd uh, of June. Let us pray. Great is your wisdom and welcoming God. Great is your creativity and your glory fills the world that you have made. Your loving imagination is ever present. Great is your power and merciful Lord. And great is your gentleness. Your loving heals in our broken world. Your strength upholds the fragile world we are living in. Father, we don't forget those who are suffering from COVID-19. Those who have lost their relatives, their parents. Those who have lost their children. Those who have lost their jobs. Father, we pray that you bring the spirit of recovery over these people. Father, we thank you that you are God and you will continue to look after us. Be with us, Lord, as we worship you, as we listen to your message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to call Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God from the book of John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful week and not too cold out there. It's, it's freezing at Yungaburra, but anyway, I'd like to read to you John 20, 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Now I'll get Johnson back to share his message with you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, let us pray again. We praise you, God the Creator, for mountains and oceans, for streams and plateaus, for animals, for birds and for fish, for aromas and textures, for sound and silence. In all you reveal your love. We praise you, God our Father, for living and breathing, for stories and teaching, for dying and rising, for peace and for hope, light and life. Father, we thank you. As we listen to this message, Lord Jesus Christ, it should help us in our everyday today life. It should bring light and hope and help us to live as a community, as a society. Father, let the Holy Spirit take control of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. We want to thank God that we have got another midweek service again. Uh, it's Pentecost week. Maybe you already know Sunday or it's Pentecost day. And it's three days after we celebrate the birth of the church and the giving of the Holy Spirit is our lesson from the book of Acts. When it says when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. 
and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut, where the disciples were fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad and they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. John 20, verse 19 to 23. So the story continues. Jesus reassured the happy disciples with another blessing of peace. Do not forget that to offer such a blessing in ancient Hebrew culture connected a wish for completeness, for the total well-being of those being blessed. So in John's linguistic tradition, the Greek term translated peace, here is a wish for complete concord, unit among all those blessed. So Jesus came to wish the best for his people as well as to offer them unity and harmony with himself and with each other. That's what he wants for you and for me. So the reason Lord continues to address his followers. He told his disciples he was sending them as his father sent him. Christ is sending you and me out into the world. John 20 verse 21. And then John says, Jesus breathed on them. He gave them the Holy Spirit. There you have it. According to John's version of the gospel, the disciples had the Holy Spirit even before Pentecost. According to John. So what? That's the point of all this talk about the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe in speaking tongues like other Christians do, what does the Holy Spirit have to do with you every day in life? Our Bible lesson for today and the title for this sermon to you is and forgiveness come is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And forgiveness come is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's too easy to forgive when the Holy Spirit is in you. You don't hold on to grudges. After Jesus had given the Holy Spirit to his disciples, he added, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. By giving us the Holy Spirit, Jesus gives his followers, gives you and me, the authority to forgive. So the word forgive literally means to give the life back again, to start over again. And to start over a new and afresh. Yet in our grudge bearing, this is precisely what we thought to do. A grudge is a claim on another person's life. That person has done us wrong, either a real or a perceived wrong, and we will not let him forget it. We do not let him forget, forget it because the grudge gives us power over him. We have something on him. We can inhibit his life and hold it over him. We can quietly await our chance to get even to take our revenge. We can make him live in fear, never knowing when we will ambush him psychologically. Consequently, we, we make life like armed, the, the, the armed battlefield that it is. We, 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 we don't want to let that um, thing go. So we keep it on record. We even remind people that there is something they have done wrong to you. And you will never forgive them. So the point here is to remind us that forgiveness is a big part of Pentecost. It's like Martin Luther and the 4th century African uh, theologian St. Augustine said, forgiveness of sin is what the church is all about. So this is what the Pentecost is. The giving of the Spirit, the giving of new life from the Father, from the Son, through the Son. So the Holy Spirit is what makes it possible for people to go when they are sent. The Spirit is God's active personal presence that accompanies those who are sent. You can only go with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit brings the content and the power of the task of which Christ's followers are sent. Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. Go 
and forgive sins. So that's what being gathered is all about. That the followers may be forgiven and renewed, sent and equipped, in order that all people may be reconciled to God by having their sins forgiven. Sin is the problem. Forgiveness is the solution. Sin means that we are enemies of God. That things are not right between us and that we have gone astray. That we do not trust the one who made us in the first place. Forgiveness of sin is an account of Christ means that while we were God's enemies, God took it upon himself. And what did he do? And wiped all our sins. And we become clean. And we become friends of God. No more enemies. So forgiveness of sins means that God seeks the lost, welcomes back the prodigal, binds up the poor and broken hearted. Forgiveness of sin means that God is in Christ proves to be trustworthy by never letting us go for us so that we can trust him. Jesus sends his followers with the gift of the Holy Spirit to save the world by forgiving sins. So we have been asked to carry the duty. When Jesus said on the cross, forgive them for they do not know what they were doing. We are also to carry the same message with us to forgive people. Those who think, those who think they are unforgivable. He really seems to be taking a chance by doing it in this way. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So God acts now through those who follow Jesus Christ. We must pronounce the words of forgiveness if people are to be forgiven. We need to pronounce them ourselves. We need to say, I have forgiven you. And if we do not do so, if we retain the sins of some, those people will not be forgiven. Have ways a lot like, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Send you to do what? To forgive people. That is what the message is all about. It is the reason Christ who brings not only the knowledge of forgiveness, but who imparts the ability to forgive. So who we have died with Christ and have been raised with him in baptism, we will participate in the life of his body, know the freedom of forgiveness brings, and we are able to share that with others. In the second place, this is part of the action of the Holy Spirit in our lives. More accurately, it is the action of Christ through the Holy Spirit in our midst. By the power of the Spirit, Christ present both forgiving us and forgiving through us. So the Spirit is given to us by Christ himself. He is the one who has given us the Spirit to be able to forgive others. He breathed upon the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Small wonder. Then that in many baptismal rites, it became customary for the presiding minister to breathe upon those to be baptized. If in baptism we participate in the very life, death and resurrection of Christ, then surely we participate in the life of the Spirit which gives, which he gives us. I cannot forgive on my own. I cannot forgive on my own. My heart, my mind are too prone to revenge, to hold on grudges, to want justice, whatever that may be, to expect a, I can pronounce a word of forgiveness on my own. I cannot pronounce the word of forgiveness on my own, except by the Holy Spirit. So there will be those who say forgiveness is merely sentimental and who greet their teeth as they demand more obvious visions. I cannot judge them. I only know that to forgive in such a manner is beyond human comprehension. It is the work of God and can only be done by, such, by us through the grace and God at work in us. So our Lord, when he was upon the cross, forgive us his executioners while he was being nailed to it. There was no preliminary absolution in advance. So forgiveness, like the resurrection, breaks in upon us through shut doors. And we do not know how it happened. Whether we are the forgiven or the forgivers. But it just happened. So the Bible is clear that only God has the authority to forgive sins. Why does this man thus speak blasphemous? Who can forgive sins but only God? In Matthew 2 verse 7. So the scribes and the Pharisees refused to accept the divinity of Jesus. So they accused him of blasphemy. But they did accurately recognize that only God has the authority to forgive sins. They knew that yes, 
The only person who can forgive sin is God. And that's why I said you cannot forgive sins on your own. Only God can forgive sin. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus emphasized, he linked the Holy Spirit to forgiveness. He linked the Holy Spirit to forgiveness. He wanted to make it clear in so many ways that forgiveness and Christian living are works of God. They are works of God. When Jesus came to the disciples, he showed them his hands and his feet. And then his side. And the showing of his side is nothing but the showing of his heart. So in order that we may see how kind, how loving and father like his mind is towards us, we have to see his heart. That's why he showed us his side. So that we see his heart. So Christ does not wait for his disciples to go after him. In fact, he goes after us through locked doors. You and I have a way of putting up locked doors for Jesus. Isn't it? That's one of the reasons that is hard to believe in his resurrection sometimes. But Jesus breaks the, those locked doors of our lives. And when he comes, he comes in a warm, friendly manner. That's what the offer of peace is all about. When you realize that God, that Jesus takes the initiative in your life, then you better understand how the Pentecost message of the giving of the Holy Spirit can make a difference in your life. And how forgiveness and life come easy. So the Spirit is Christ's presence among us. In Galatians 4 verse 6 it says, And because your sons and God has sent the Spirit of his Son unto your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, my Father. And so forgiveness and the good works of life are his work. It's God's work. It's not your work. That is God's work. I like the way another great 16th century uh, Protestant reformer, John Calvin, explained the Holy Spirit. He called the Spirit the power of God. The Holy Spirit is God's power gives you and me the power, the strength, and the ability to do God's work. Think of it. If you and I do anything, any good, if our lives have purpose, it is only because God has given us the power, the ability to do them. That is what the giving of the Holy Spirit is all about. So forgiveness is like, is like life. Does not always come easy. It's so hard to forgive someone who had killed your son. Right? It is so hard sometimes to face another day. But it is not so difficult if you believe in Jesus Christ that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are able to forgive. Because if you believe that then you can also start to believe that you and I do not do the forgiving. Do not give meaning to our lives. Do not even have to find purpose. It's all God's work. You don't need to break anything about. It's God's work. After all, his Holy Spirit is the one who has the power to do things. His Holy Spirit provides the breath, the oxygen we need to live. You can be certain of God's forgiveness. Even if you are not quite sure that the one who says you are forgiven really meant it. Because God gave it. Get the point. When somebody says he or she forgive you, believe it. It's not there to give. It comes from God. So you need to accept it. Bearing the grudge becomes a life draining burden. Don't be a grudge. While we are waiting to get even, to right the wrong, the world is out dancing. Grudge bearing is something like carrying around radioactive nuclear waste, ready to howl it at our enemy, and only to find that the radioactive is destroying us. And think of the radioactivity, destroying so many marriages, so many families, so many relationships. We are offended. We get angry. We carry a grudge and won't let it go until we get our, our pound of flesh. Grudge bearers are self-righteous and cannot forgive because they have not been forgiven and cannot forgive even themselves. But you need to forgive because forgiveness is part of the Holy Spirit. Is forgiveness real? Is it possible? Yes. Says Jesus to the legalist, sanctifying theologians from Jerusalem. Forgiveness is real. 
possible because God is love and always has been. So God is not a legalist. God is a lover, says Jesus, and he created people to be lovers, to be forgivers, to practice and to experience the power of forgiveness. And that's what we need to follow, to be able to forgive. So the words of forgiveness are not God's. If the human speaker had some reservations, take it as if God himself had spoken these words to you. Forgiveness is God's work, not yours, not mine. It's God's work in our lives. It wants to change us to be the people whom God wants us to be. I don't know about you, but that is a wonderful, free insight. It takes the pressure off me when it comes to my relationship with God. When it comes to my relationship with you and with others. Forgiveness, like most things pertaining to God, is not a matter of feeling. Forgiveness depends on God. Forgiveness is a work of the Holy Spirit whom Christ has already given to you and me. What a wonderful, free, freeing word. It takes the pressure off, makes life a, a little easier. That is why our gospel lesson that says the disciple rejoiced when they saw the Lord in John 20, verse 20. So when we have been filled with the Holy Spirit, like you and I, and the disciples have forgiveness and living come easy. Because they are God's job. Such good days and purpose just follow themselves. Friends, the next time we have a tough task to do, have difficult forgiving, enjoy it. Why? God the Holy Spirit is going along and he will do all the heavy lifting for you. Let's be careful to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives by cultivating a forgiving spirit. We need to yield ourselves as instruments of righteousness and be free from bitterness. That is killing a lot of people. Finally, we are called and sent to participate in Christ's message of forgiveness because we have been forgiven. I am a forgiven sinner. That's why I talk about forgiveness. I know that I am not somebody who is righteous. I know that I am here because of the grace of God. So I am a forgiven sinner. As the Father sent me, even so I send you. Christ was sent to be the agent of reconciliation. And we are to be such agents in the world. So forgiveness is real. Forgiveness is possible. Because we have received the Holy Spirit, we are all people with power to forgive. If you have received the Holy Spirit, you cannot hold on to any grudges. So by forgiving, you are telling to the world that the Holy Spirit is abiding in you. The Holy Spirit is working in your life. So we do have the power to forgive as God's sons and daughters. Or as Jesus said, even centuries earlier, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of end, and they are forgiven. You retain the sins of end, they are retained. We have received the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore be people who exercise our power to forgive. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, to forgive those who have hurt you. To forgive those who have wronged you. To forgive those who we have done bad things on you. Those who have framed you wrongly. Those who have done a lot of things. Those who have tried to destroy your character. Please forgive. I urge you, forgive. Forgiveness shows that the Holy Spirit is part of your life. Because Jesus said, now I give you the Holy Spirit so that whoever you forgive, it will be done. So I ask you to forgive others. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Great is your wisdom, Father. Welcoming God. We thank you that you love us. You love us so much. Forgive us, merciful God, for the barriers we build between ourselves and you. For the love we refuse to show, the apath and indifference. Forgive us when we will not receive your spirit in fullest measure. 
and when we choose our way and not yours. The Spirit brings peace. The Spirit brings love. We are forgiven. We are made new. Forgive us, Lord. We praise you, Father. God the Creator, for the mountains and the oceans, for the streams and everything that you have created. And we want to thank you that you continue to bless us, Father. We praise you for the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the wisdom and faith. For the healing and empowering Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you. For the prophets and the proclamation of the word of God, the knowledge and service of God. For the forgiveness and renewal for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Breathing, redeeming God, we bring you our thanks and praise. You love us. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. Loving God, may our breath be your breath. Our loving, your loving in us. Our love, your love through us. May you help us to forgive others through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless us this day and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.